Oh. 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 Holy This week was insane. What's up, Comic Book Nation? BD here with your second printing of the week's biggest issues at comicbook.com. And there is not enough time in this video or in Spider-Man 3 for me to run through everything that happened this week, but we are gonna try our best to touch all the biggest stories. So buckle up, grab some water, because hot damn, it was a big week on the press. Buckle up. It all started when Alfred Molina was reported as part of the Spider-Man 3 cast, reprising his Doc Ock role from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. This means that that Spider-Man 3 cast now includes Alfred Molina's Doc Ock, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, Jamie Foxx as Electro, and rumors of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, Charlie Cox's Daredevil, Eric Banas, Hulk, Hayden Christensen, Zanuck and Skywalker, the entire cast of Euphoria, my dog Nova, and Tom Holland and still has a cameo. Okay, some of those aren't true, but honestly at this point, we just don't know what is or isn't valid. I don't know what to believe anymore. But John Watts, this guy, he's going from directing Spider-Man 3 to directing the Fantastic Four, Marvel's first family, is coming to the MCU and John Watts just said, bring it on to Ant-Man's Peyton Reed. Oh, it's already been barrotting who has been openly wanting that movie like forever. It's hard to keep up with everything Marvel announced during the Investor Day event, and I honestly don't have time to run through it all without killing your phone battery or my editor's will to live. Oh, thank God. To be fair, naming all the movies and Disney Plus shows might not take as long as naming everyone in Spider-Man 3, but this is what the Marvel slate between now and 2023 looks like, save for that Spider-Man movie and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which Kevin Feige promised for 2023. Meanwhile, the X-Men are sitting there like Isaiah Thomas after the Dream Team assembled without him. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. Shout out to Marvel Studios for electing not to recast Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. Losing T'Challa in these stories will be tough, but taking any single bit of Chadwick's legacy away from him would be tougher. We can talk more about all the Marvel casting and news anytime you want. Hit me up at Brandon Davis BD and scroll through the comicbook.com Instagram account, which I'm willing to bet you might be watching me on right now to see all the big news from Thursday because, oh my gosh, there was a lot of it, but we covered it all for you. And one last one, I bet you've been saying Shang-Chi wrong this whole time because if you've been saying Shang-Chi like I have, well, Kevin Feige just learned us all a lesson. We've just wrapped production in Australia on our film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Outside of Marvel, Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman director, is directing a Star Wars movie. She landed Rogue Squadron, which literally hurts my feelings because Patty stared me in the face over Zoom for more than 15 minutes earlier this week after I watched Wonder Woman 1984, and she just didn't want to tell me about this. I'm appalled. Although I highly recommend watching the video where Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot, and myself surprise some big Wonder Woman fans. I'll have that for you next week. It's really awesome. It was such a feel-good moment. So many feelings. <laughs> but going back to Star Wars for a second, Hayden Christensen is coming back as Darth Vader for the Obi-Wan series. Yes, prequel love, let's go. And better yet, an Ahsoka spin-off series is coming after her live-action debut on The Mandalorian, and I am absolutely not going to act like I didn't see this coming. It was more obvious than the guy on the Hotels.com commercials. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I talked to Joe Manganiello on Tuesday, even though it feels like seven years ago, and his Arch Enemy movie is out in theaters and on digital now, but he did open up about Deathstroke and confirmed he filmed some additional scenes for Zack Snyder's Justice League. If his tease was any indication, this Slade Wilson is, quote, a nasty, nasty dude, and I don't think he means he eats with his hands. <gasps> DC Comics revealed this week that the next Batman is Tim Fox in their Future State stories, and it was a very well-received reveal, but am I the only one who can't help but notice the resemblance between Tim Fox and Michael Keaton, just as Keaton gets ready to suit up as Batman again for the Flash movie? I still wish they showed us literally anything about the Flash movie at CCXP, by the way. CCXP was so boring. This one's a real snooze. I wish we had as much time here as Warner Brothers did at CCXP, because so much more happened this week, like Alien getting a series on FX set on Earth, with Ridley Scott attached. Daryl and Michonne from The Walking Dead are making their way to Fortnite. There's only one episode of season two of The Mandalorian remaining. And above all else, Mario Lopez is playing the KFC Colonel in a completely serious murder mystery Hallmark movie. What is even going on? What is happening? <gasps> 
That's your second printing of the week's biggest issues at comicbook.com. If you could watch one of the Marvel titles right now, which one would it be? Share your thoughts in the comments section or send them my way on Instagram at Brandon Davis Speedy. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and head over to comicbook.com for more updates. I'm BD, and I'm sorry for yelling at you. Thank you.